Hi everybody, welcome to the Eastfield Gun Room Gun Review uh, of the day and today we're going to have a look at quite a special and certainly very rare browning. Now this is a browning I've certainly never had my hands on before. Uh, I do remember reading a review in a certain shooting publication, I think it was Gun Mart, which was a review by Mark Yardley, you know, several years ago. I uh, thought it was quite a curious gun at the time and I'm lucky enough to have got my hands on one, so I am going to show it to you. So, tiny little bit of history uh, for those that don't know. The Browning B25 is the handmade Belgian Browning, uh, which was invented by John Moses Browning back in 1925. Very, very different to its sort of Japanese counterparts today, the 525, the 725, got the predecessors of the 325 and the 425, whereby this gun, uh, as part of Browning's heritage is continued um, to be produced today completely by hand in the factory in Belgium. I think B25s as a rule have lost a little bit of popularity because if you went back into the, the 1970s and 80s, they were very, very popular, particularly with game shooters, also with clay shooters. And for people of a certain generation that remember them, that have owned one, that have aspired to own one, they will tell you that in terms of handling, there is very little to even come close to that of a B25. So this particular model is a 20 gauge, I'm gonna pick it up now, um, is a much more recent B25. So this was manufactured new in 2011. So we're looking at just over, just over 10 years ago. And at the time it was launched as a limited edition special and it was called a SP special. And it sort of sat in between, for those that know the grades of B25, it sat in between the B2G, which is um, almost a kind of the, the, the lowest grade um, handmade B25 you can buy, which has got the, the nice game scene engraving with the very deep Germanic scroll. And then the C2G, which was certainly a step up in terms of the engraving and the wood quality. The thing to remember though, is even if you've got a 1960s uh, black action plane A1, or a very, very high grade E1 side plate or D5G side plate, the fundamental manufacturing process of the gun is exactly the same. So this particular model, like I said, limited edition, 2011, and it's very different to what you'd normally get in a, in a, in a, B, in a hand engraved B25 because the engraving is much finer, a bit like the older B2 and C2 models, again, from the, the 70s and the 80s. Um, this is a, 30 inch game gun. So narrow game rib, I think it's six mil to four mil or about six mil parallel, which of course um, makes it quite light uh, versus a sporter. And whereby with a, a Beretta, you've got the very narrow style action that everybody loves because they're a bit lighter to walk around. The thing I've always thought with the Browning is with that deeper body, they're just a bit smoother to shoot and a bit less susceptible to, to felt recoil. So, if we start off with the action. So the good thing about a B25 is they're very customizable. It's got a very, very soft action. Uh, in the 1990s, when I first started back in the trade, there was a lot of people that were sending the very basic models like the A1s and the B1s over to Belgium to have them re-engraved, restocked into what's called B25 Customs. And if you look around, there's a number of those in use. You know, you can go, uh, full hog with a, a three piece four and like off a D grade or, or whatever you wanted to do. So they are very customizable. So it's it's a gun that you can kind of tailor make to yourself uh, in terms of the engraving. There's not many guns like that because the action tends to be harder and certainly the processes involved. So if we look at the action, bear in mind this is a 20 gauge. So it's really designed for um, small game, partridge, woodcock, etc. We've got um, the, the nice little narrow action I talked about uh, with a very nice game scene. You've got deep scroll around the borders um, on the barrel wings as well. And the game scene in particular on this side is that of some two woodcock. And the attention to detail, considering this is kind of like a B grade, you know, it's not, it's not a gun that's had thousands and thousands of hours of engraving put into it. It's, you know, a quite quite an affordable luxury small gauge B25. Um, the engraving is superb, the attention to detail, particularly the scenes in the background. 
Um, you can see quite clearly all the, the trees made out and the, and the foliage in the background, really, really nicely done. And if we look on the other side, um, as expected, we've got partridge, which again is the intended quarry for a, a shotgun like this. So you've got um, a sort of a field view. Again, you know, really, really nice attention to detail. And let's not forget the whole thing, all the engraving on this gun is completely hand engraved right down to, I believe, the serial number. Now, if we turn the gun over, on the underside, we have got a woodcock again, just the head of a woodcock. And what's quite interesting is you've got, if, if you look at the gun from the underneath, it does look essentially like a 525 or a 325 because it's got that traditional browning locking mechanism. Trigger guard is very nicely engraved. And you can see on this particular gun, you've got the, um, the engraver's signature, which we'll move on to later on with the, the provenance for the shotgun. And also on the inside of the trigger guard, you've got some of the um, some of the hardening, the, the colour from when the, the gun was hardened in the um, in the Belgium custom shop. Full tank trigger guard, really really nice touch um, on a on an over and under shotgun. And as standard, you've got a fully sliding forend, which can be a little tiny bit stiff. So take the gun apart. We just slide the forend forward. And again, if we have a close look inside the action you'll see more again of what i've talked about the um the hardening of the action the colors the blues the greens and again this is just um this is just testament to the fact that they're in belgium they are still using traditional methods to manufacture these shotguns or at the same time trying to bring them bang up to date in terms of barrel length chokes etc now, as with all B25s of recent years, I believe they are now, they've changed it slightly and they're now doing multi-choke ones with the Invector DS um, series of chokes. The B, this gun is fixed choke. It's called a three-quarter. So um, a very capable gun if you wanted to shoot pheasant on a peg or you wanted to take it part of shooting. You could argue that the top barrel is probably a little bit tight if you wanted it as an out-and-out -out partridge or, or woodcock game gun. But again, with the, the manufacture of these guns, they use quite soft metal, so very, very easy to, to sort of ream the choke out, reduce the choke, or at the same time, you could have it more to choke by, you know, the likes of somebody like Teague. Auto safer standard, okay. Again, if you look at it, the attention to detail, you've got the, the selector is engraved, you've got a gold O and U underneath it, and this particular gun, although it is a used shotgun, as very very little use maybe three four hundred cartridges in its lifetime so essentially it kind of presents as a new gun um, completely unaltered so we'll move on to the wood now as with all b25s um, browning use european walnut uh, and you know if you've got a, a miraku which is of course it's a japanese made um, product Quite often, they well, 99% of the time, they'll use American walnut, but you tend to find, if you buy a high-grade browning, I don't know whether it's politics or what it is, but they always tend to come with European walnut. Uh, this particular gun, extremely well-figured. Uh, you've got dropper points, double-point checker in. I mean, I've seen C grades and maybe even D grades over the years that haven't got such a nice piece of wood. It really is really very nice. Traditional browning curved butt plate. Um, and interesting thing with B25s, they always come a little bit short in the stock compared to modern Japanese browning. So this is 14 and 5 eighths. But again, as with all shotguns, it's no problem to shorten, lengthen, etc., depending on the requirements of the user. Uh, I've just mentioned the dropper points, but I'll just show you there. Really, really nice. Again, hand done, hand checkering. Everything about this gun, uh, certainly 90% of it is handmade and hand finished in belgium chrome line barrels um very important again a bit of history if you go back to the 1960s and 70s certainly the b25s were not chrome lined if you get a b25 trap from about 1978 i think that's when they started chrome lining them and you would see a c on the um on the side of the barrels which of course would denote the fact that it was it was chrome lined just having a quick look at the forend, again, double point, very, very nicely matched to the stock. Engraved forend iron, engraved latch. You know, you can't help but be impressed by the attention to detail that they've gone to. Particularly, like I said, you know, this gun was marketed between a B2G, which is 
you know, essentially quite a basic B25. Let's not, you know, pretend it's not. They made thousands and thousands. Um, very expensive today, much more affordable 20 years ago, but, you know, in essence, what isn't? And if we look at the actual handling of the gun, uh, the gun weighs six pound nine ounces. Feels absolutely lovely. You know, I've shot a Miraku 20 bore uh, MK60 for, you know, several years, and it doesn't feel that dissimilar to that, to be honest with you. Um, balance wise, it is pretty much as you'd expect for a, a handmade gun in Belgium. Absolutely on the hinge pin. Look at that. One of the interesting things with this particular gun is, like I said, um, one owner from new, very low shot count, is it's completely unaltered. Now, let's not forget that when you've got a, a shotgun of a certain price point, of a certain value, uh, a lot of people, and the example I'm going to use here is of the Winchester Grand European from the 1980s. Because they were an expensive gun and it was, you know, there wasn't that many people that could afford one, the first thing they would do is have it fitted by a gunsmith. So to find a gun um, like a Grand European from 40 years ago that hasn't been altered is rare. So it's nice to be able to have this in its standard form. We've talked about the stock length, the dimensions of the uh, dropper comb, dropper heel are 3757, which, you know, is a little bit low, particularly for someone like me who's six foot four with a long neck, but it ultimately is that traditional game feel we don't want to affect the balance. It's nice and slim in the stock. A nice little, another touch I want to, another point I want to add is if you look on the barrels, it actually says that the gun is made in Herstal in Belgium uh, and it's 20 gauge, three inch. And again, that is hand engraved onto the barrels. Another nice point with this particular gun, if you are to purchase, certainly in the UK, a new B25 B2G today, and I keep coming back to the B2G because it's kind of the benchmark, uh, again, in the UK, that's been set by the B25. It was uh, a gun that many people aspired to, particularly if they owned a plain black action A1 in the 70s or the 80s. And it's a gun that's very well known, very respected. But interestingly enough, for a number of years, and I think, like I said today, if you buy one, it comes in a cardboard box. So from a presentation point of view, they have also got this little B25 absolutely spot on. So we've got here a genuine leather custom shop case. Just open that up there and see how nice that is in there. Very, very pretty. I mean, these alone are hellishly expensive if you want to buy one. And I also appreciate the fact that most people say, you know, the case goes in the loft. But like I said, from a presentation point of view, when you're buying a gun of a certain quality of a certain price you know things like this make you feel special and this is a special gun so inside here we've got this lovely lined um lovely lined case in kind of this velory foamy stuff okay and then you've got the uh, custom shop barrel sleeve and sock sleeve and more important than this you know over the years i've sold a number of b25s uh, a, a lot of them have come in custom shop cases or original cases, but it's quite rare to get all of the original provenance and all of the documentation with it. So if we look inside this little bag, we've got the proof certificate to show the gun approved in Belgium, which again, you know, if you buy, if you go down to your local gun shop and you buy a Browning or a Miracle, you will get one of those with it. And it just, it just confirms the serial number, the length of the barrel, the weight of the gun, what it's been proved at, etc. But the really exciting thing with this is we've got the original custom shop certificate, which has been hand filled in. So it talks about the caliber of the gun, the grade of the gun. Um, and on this side, you've got who the gun was engraved by and who the actual gun was assembled by. So you've got, uh, JP Bailey, it says there, which has also uh, been signed on the underside of the action that we looked at. Uh, and the actual, the gun was essentially finished uh, 26th of the 4th, 2012. Now that also gives a little bit of an insight in terms of production scale for these guns. If you were to go and order a new B25 today, the lead time is sort of 18 months to two and a half years regardless of the grade. And again, that is all down to the manufacturing methods that are still used um, over in Belgium, like the hardening, uh, the hand engraving, hand checkering, 
etc etc so you've got a nice little um, proof certificate nice engraving certificate and then there's also a nice little custom shop book which tells you you know all about the gun you know don't point it at your mate and all that um and it's just the it's just the complete package you know this is a rare gun probably even rarer in 20 gauge i believe only a handful of these were imported into the uk and i think that today as a second hand option offers a you know a huge amount of value because of the cost of a lot of the japanese ones have moved on considerably you know the browning 525 heritage you could compare it to the Miracle MK11. These guns are getting more and more expensive. So although the, um, from my point of view, the B25 has died a little bit in popularity, these now offer excellent, excellent value for money for a handmade shotgun. Just to finish off in the case, you've got leather straps to strap the gun in. You've got this nice little box in here, which has got a trigger lock and you've got your keys. And it's, again, it's just all about presentation. They've absolutely got it right. So from my point of view, this is, in my eyes, it knocks spots off a of B2G in terms of the quality and the finish. Although let's not forget the fact that it's essentially the same shotgun underneath. It is just the cosmetics of it. But really, really pretty thing. Um, and like I say, you've got to come back to the handling. You speak to people, that have shot for a number of years, they will tell you they are there is nothing like a B25. And one thing I do want to point out is this gun's got 30 inch barrels, which again, modern day game shooters, they want tall, they want longer tubes, they want to shoot taller birds. If you buy a 20 gauge B25 from the 70s, the chances are it was 26 and a half inches because that's what people bought. You know, the game guns in 12 gauge were 27 and a half inch. They had roach belly stocks rather than four pistol grips. And certainly from my point of view, prior to this and a couple of B2G 30 inch guns and maybe beyond C2G, the majority of what I've seen in B25 small gauge has always been shorter barrels. So that's been the B25 Special Edition 2011-2012 from me. If you've got any questions, please feel free to comment below. Send me an email to matt at eastfield.group, which will come up on the, uh, on the bottom of there. Uh, in terms of gun reviews, I'm hoping no one's done one on this, so it gives you something a bit different to look at. If there's any particular gun you want to see reviewed, please get in touch, and I'll do my absolute best to bring you that review. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Cheers.